Feels like, in the immediate few days, like Iran and the U.S. have backed away from the brink of war. For now. But some experts are still concerned about a new front, cyber warfare. Today, we spoke with Paul Rosenzweig, who writes this. Iran has a long history of avoiding direct military conflicts and instead projecting its national power through proxies and asymmetric means. In some cases, this has been accomplished through support for terrorist militias such as Hezbollah. And for at least the last 10 years, cyber conflict has been a key part of Iran's arsenal. Joining us now is Paul Rosenzweig. He's a senior fellow in national security and cybersecurity at R Street Institute. Uh, Mr. Rosenzweig, first of all, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. You have an op-ed in the Los Angeles Times in which you argue Iran is likely readying itself to conduct disruptive, if not destructive, attacks on our digital infrastructure. I wonder what would prompt them to go from preparation for that, plans for that, to actually deploying and acting on something. Well, it may very well be that we've already pushed the button with the killing of Soleimani. Uh, that's really a decision about uh, uh, that's based on Iranian psychology, and, and it's hard for me to say with any confidence that I know what that is. Um, is certainly, any further steps uh, involving confrontation with Iran are would increase the likelihood of a, a response from Iran. And as I said in the op-ed, I think that the most likely venue for that is uh, in the cyber realm, where they have a, 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 a pretty good track record. So is the president saying Iran is de-escalating, perhaps um, uh, putting sort of the cart before the bull a little bit? Well, it's a little bit like President Bush's mission accomplished. He's declaring victory uh, before we're 100 percent sure that the war is over. He may very well be right. I mean, it could very well be that the Iranians have decided that the tit for tat of the of the missile attacks on the air bases in Iraq was sufficient response uh, for them, and that they don't need to do more. But uh, it's equally plausible, indeed, I, I think, a slightly more plausible that they'll uh, respond with some additional activity, and cyber is probably one of the means that that will, that they'll consider. You walked through some of this in your iPad, but I wonder if you could just give our viewers some insight on what you think Iran could be capable of doing and what kind of areas of our digital infrastructure they may target. Well, one of the places that I pointed out that actually concerns me the most is our election infrastructure, which is uh, very weak and uh, very vulnerable. And we've demonstrated in the last three years pretty much our inability to come to grips with that vulnerability. We haven't devoted enough funding to fixing the uh, uh, vulnerabilities in the system. We haven't uh, paid any systematic attention to it at the federal level in terms of uh, preparing for onslaughts. It would be easy for me to imagine an assault that wiped out a database in a uh, close election state, a battleground state, uh, on the eve of our uh, national elections in November. And I cannot imagine how uh, we would respond to or recover from that kind of assault. What's Iran's endgame? Because you don't just undermine confidence in an election result or wipe out uh, hospital servers, as you illustrate in your piece, for no reason. What does the Iranian government want out of the U.S. government? I think they want to be left alone. I, I think that they see America as imposing on them our vision of economic uh, and political uh, reality that they object to. Uh, the regime there is interested in regime stability and maintaining its power, and they see that the uh, president's maximum pressure campaign as threatening that, and they want it to stop. Well, Paul Reisenzweig, I really appreciate uh, your insight on this and taking the time to come on and help us understand some of the risks we still face and how they fit into the broader context. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. One more note here. We could see Democratic Senator Tim Kaine introduce a war powers resolution in the Senate any day now. That resolution would be similar to the one passed in the House Thursday.